Today, we are ranking the Pac-12 coaches with our On3 coaching insider, Jesse Simonton. Last week, we ranked the Big Ten. In the week before that, it was the SEC. Now, we are heading out west to rank the Pac-12. Let's take a look at these rankings by Jesse. Uh, don't sleep on the Pac-12 because they have a quality slate of coaches, as you can see here. Lincoln Riley at the top, Kyle Whittingham, Kalen DeBoer, Jonathan Smith, Dan Lanning, Chip Kelly, the great Deion Sanders, Jake Dickert, Justin Wilcox, Jed Fish, Troy Taylor, and my guy Kenny Dillingham rounds out the list. Jesse, who has the most to prove this year when it comes to coaching in the Pac-12? I mean, it's got to be Dion, right? I didn't really know how to even where to rank him in this list because what he's done on the recruiting trail, flipping that roster, you know, already 40-some-odd new faces, uh, going to Boulder. But we really don't know kind of what he's going to do, whether it's with the staff that he's assembled, Charles Kelly, defensive coordinator, Sean Lewis, formerly the head coach at Kent State. You know, he's done a lot of things to set himself up for success, but Colorado is just simply not a program that has been successful. One uh, bowl game in 15 years. So I think, you know, Dion's got a lot to prove because he's obviously going to puff his chest and he's going to, you know, he's told everyone he's coming, he's doing it his way. Now let's see what the results look like. I think, you know, some people have some wild expectations for Colorado. To me, if Deion Sanders has this program even sniffing a bowl game, that's a huge win in year one. Uh, for his program, and I think could really set themselves up for some momentum in 2024 and beyond. All right, well, let's let's go back to the top. Let's go back to the top. Start at number one. It's not Coach Prime, but you do have Lincoln Riley there over Kyle Whittingham. Tell me about that decision and how you played that out. Yeah, a lot of Utah fans uh, pretty upset with me. Didn't know they had such a you know uh, loud fan base, but my, but they were They're flooding my Twitter mentions. Those guys in the Arizona State fans, they, they were all particularly peeved. But to me, I just think it was more the body of work. I think what Kyle Whittingham has done is phenomenal. Back-to-back uh, -back Pac-12 championships. He did beat Lincoln Riley twice. Uh, it, it, but again, I think it's a small sample size kind of situation here. Lincoln Riley was not supposed to take a 4-8 and eight team to basically being on the, you know, uh, within a couple plays, frankly, uh, of making the college football playoff. Caleb Williams gets hurt in that Pac-12 championship game against Utah. The game completely flips. They had a very close loss at Utah earlier in the season. Lincoln Riley way ahead of schedule. I think for all the quote-unquote you know, quick rebuilds we've seen in this sport the last couple of years, no one's probably done it with more efficiency uh, than what Lincoln Riley did last season. Now, he clearly benefited from the fact that he was able to bring, you know, a star quarterback with him to Los Angeles. Um, but I think three college football playoff appearances at Oklahoma, what he did taking over that Sooners program, and I think what he's doing now at USC kind of tipped the scales in his favor for me. All right, let's go back to Coach Prime. He's sitting there at number seven on your list. What are your general expectations, though? Like you said, Coach Prime comes in talking big trash, doing it his way, a little bit brash, a little bit bold, but he is still taking over a program that won one game last season. So what would you consider a successful season under Coach Prime in year one? Well, I think you framing that is exactly right. I think, you know, again, Deion Sanders, Deion Sanders, his name resonates, you know, with parents, players, prospects, what have you. Uh, but that doesn't guarantee success. And I don't think a lot of people understand just how deep in the weeds Colorado has been for the last couple decades. Yes, it's a proud program that once won a national championship, you know, in 1990, but th this is not 1990. Yeah. Deion Sanders was about to be, you know, Deion Sanders was about to, you know, play for the Yankees or whatever back then. This is, <laughs> this is a totally different situation. So I, again, if he can have this team even sniffing a bowl game, I think that's a huge win. Look at Colorado's schedule. I'm not sure people understand how difficult the schedule is going to be either. They play nine Pac-12 conference games and then also have TCU and Nebraska to start the season. So whoever that AD is that put that situation together, you know, if I'm Deion Sanders, I'm running into his office and saying, not again. You're never throwing me 11 Power 5 teams on my schedule 
<laughs> hence moving forward. Right. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, a, a bowl game would be a grand slam in my mind. I mean, like I said, a program that won Agreed. one football game last year. I think four, five, you get into the six win range. That's a grand slam. But four or five wins, I think, would be a good start for Dion. Do you agree with that? A hundred percent. And we don't know how good Shadur is. I know I know Shadur did some nice things uh, at Jackson State, but this is a big jump. And, you know, he wasn't the best FCS quarterback. He was just a really good FCS quarterback. And so it, 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 the expectations around this program, uh, I think, are a little bit outlandish compared to the reality of the situation. That's no demerit on, on Dion's, you know, potential as a head coach. I think it simply is kind of framing – this is a really hard job, and yeah, one bowl game in 15 years to expect Deion Sanders, even though he has flipped the roster, to come in and just you know snap his fingers and then you know go to the postseason. I think that's a little bit too much to ask. All right, let's go down to the bottom of the list. Talk about my guy Kenny Dillingham. I'm a little partial. I got to know Kenny really well when he was the offensive coordinator at Florida State. Now I get it; he's never coached before. Uh, he's one of the youngest coaches in the NCAA, but what are your thoughts on putting him dead last in the Pac-12 heading into the season? I, I say it at the beginning of the piece, somebody's got to be last. These are <laughs> all great coaches. These are all guys uh, who, are, who have, you know, reached the peak of their field. And to me, it's just a rules are rules. I, I'm not going to put a guy who's never coached a game ahead of even a guy like Troy Taylor, um, who was another well-successful coordinator in the Pac-12, went down to the FCS and just made it to the quarterfinals uh, with Sacramento State. I think Kenny Dillingham is going to find himself in the upper echelon of this list a year, two years from now. I, I wholeheartedly agree that he was a slam dunk hire for Arizona State, bringing the boy home. He's a Phoenix kid uh, who is well tied in with the high school coaches in that state, in that area. Keeping Sean Aguayo on staff was a major win. And, mm -hmm. you know, what he's done uh, in the transfer portal, I mean, he's completely flipped that roster. And it, I think Arizona State, much like Colorado, uh, is a tough job. But I think the ceiling is there for Kenny Dillingham to really, you know, make some noise out in Tempe and, and make the Sun Devils exciting again. He, they, we know they're going to score some points. Can he fix uh, that defense? And he certainly has tried to address it with some of the transfers that, that he's added. All right, Jesse, tell me, who's the most overrated coach in the Pac-12? Uh, you put me on the spot here. I, I just think that – I don't know if I would say he's overrated, but I think a lot of folks think more highly of Chip Kelly – um, than others do. And, and, you know, Chip Kelly's been at UCLA for six years now, still hadn't won 10 games. Uh, what he did at Oregon was amazing. Um, his early success with the Philadelphia Eagles was solid, but I just think the results haven't quite been there. Perhaps that flips now, though, uh, with a five-star like Dante Moore at quarterback. Chip Kelly's never been, you know, uh, a big-time recruiter. He's not. That's not. That's not really where he's interested in with the sport. More of the X's and O's, kind of dialing up the plays. But he and his staff, you know, were able to convince Dante Moore um, to come out to come out to you know West and and play for the Bruins. And if that five-star quarterback you know, hits, that could change the trajectory of that program in a hurry. Sometimes all you need is a quarterback. That's all it takes in this day and age of football. All right, Jesse, thanks for checking in with us. And hey, you guys, let us know in the comments section of this video. Do you agree with his rankings? Who do you think is the number one coach in the Pac-12? And who do you think is the most overrated coach in the Pac-12? Jesse Simonton, thanks for coming on Coach's Corner. Thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button for me and remember to check out all the videos on the On3 YouTube page.